Greetings and welcome back to Unbiased Magic Reviews. I'm glad that you guys are here. Today I'm going to be reviewing the number one trending magic effect on Penguin Magic, The Knowing by Mike Powers. Let's take a look at it. What I really love about this trick is the level of impossibility. Magicians especially can see that there should be no way to find the card. Even if the cards were face up, it would be hard to imagine how you could find the card. And yet in this trick, the cards are always face down. How can you find that card? Let me show you the famous 21 card trick. The first step is to give the deck a shuffle. The second step is to get 21 cards. There's three, there's two and two, that's seven. Three and two and two, seven more. Three and two and two, that is 21 cards. Let's give these a bit of a shuffle and get down to business. Okay, spectator is handed the packet and told to do the standard deal, three cards in a row, and then continue the threes until they've dealt the entire packet out. Cards have been shuffled, nobody knows where any card is at this point. The spectator then picks up any pile, and you can do this with your back turned if you want. Your back is turned, spectator picks up any pile, I'll just take this one, and they shuffle the packet. Spectator looks at the top card, if they don't like it, they can reshuffle and go with a different card. They leave it on top. Now you tell the spectator, cut any number of cards from either pile and drop them on top of your card. Not all cards. In other words, don't pick up the entire pile. Pick up some cards, drop them on top, and now bury the entire packet in the middle of the unused pile. This. This is where it becomes really hard to imagine how that card could be found under any circumstances. And then finally, shuffle up whatever's left over, put them on top. The magician turns around and says, and now, the famous 21 card trick. I want you to imagine your card is out there somewhere, and I want you to try to figure out which column your card falls in. So here we go, I'm gonna deal them out. And go ahead and take, oh wait a minute. Is this your card? Spectator says yes, you just go. We're done. And it just kind of gets there really fast. It's a really great trick, a really fun trick to perform. Uh, you've got the full instructions in the download. And the fact that the cards are face down all the time until you deal one card face up doubles the impossibility level. I hope you guys will use this and fool the crap out of as many people as possible. So for $10, you could pick up this 25-minute instructional video where Mike Powers is going to teach you a variation of a 21-card trick that he published in his book, Tesseract, called 21 Again. That's pretty much what you're going to get here for your $10. As usual, I'm going to try to answer those questions that you guys have, give you my impressions and my recommendations which is why you come and watch this channel. I try to give you an analytical review, something that you're not gonna find on other magic review channels. So the 21 card trick, uh, this is a classic location card plot in magic. It is so well known that most lay people perform the original version of the effect, uh, which I can trace all the way back to a book that was published in 1929 called Popular Card Tricks by Walter Gibson. If you're interested in learning the original effect in that book, it was just called The 21 Card Trick. So here, what Mike Powers has done is he took his or a version of the 21 card trick that he published in Tesseract and he modified it slightly using the same principle but a slightly different method and put out this download for you guys. So what are you gonna learn on the download? So in the beginning, he talks about how you have to modify a couple of cards. He tells you how he does it, and then he describes that he's gonna get back to that later in more detail, which he never does, unfortunately. But if you're into card magic, then you probably have already modified cards in this way. It's very simple. Um, then he step-by-step step goes through the routine, teaches you how to do it, he even uses different colored back cards so it's even easier to understand. At the end of the video, he gives you another presentational angle, although it's exactly the same effect. And that's pretty much what you can expect to get here. 
Right now on Penguin Magic, I see that everyone is reviewing this as five out of five stars. So this is just getting glowing reviews from people. It seems that they really like it a lot. You may be curious, is this really different from the version that is published in the book? The differences are the following that the version that was published in the book, the cards are dealt face up. Whereas here, the cards are dealt face down. As I mentioned, it uses the same principle. In the trailer, you see that Mike Powers is shuffling the cards in his hands before he starts. And that is another difference because the version that's taught in the book, you really can't shuffle the cards because you have to have cards in certain locations. In this variation, you can shuffle the cards yourself, but you cannot hand them out to the spectator and let them shuffle them. So that may be a negative for some people. Um, and then the other big difference, of course, as I mentioned, is that the cards are dealt face down. Um, and the only one that you're dealt, the only one you deal face up is their card. So it looks like you're going into the classic 21 card trick, but then it just ends abruptly. And that is really the whole effect uh, for you there. So how difficult is this to perform? It's semi-automatic because you're using mathematical principles. It's really easy to perform. There's no sleight of hand. As I mentioned, there is a setup in this version that's taught. Uh, you have to modify some cards. The version that's taught in the book, there's a version that doesn't use a setup at all. And then he does briefly describe a way of modifying the cards in the book so it could be done face down. Um, but in that version, the modification is actually slightly different from what you're gonna learn on this download. So those are the really big differences there um, between them. Are there any gaffes in play? There's no gaffes um, and there's no extra cards. Uh, how good is the teaching on the video? I, I, like I mentioned, it was very clear instructions. The teaching is, is good. I think that Mike Powers goes over it really well. How honest is the ad copy? Unfortunately, Penguin Magic has misled you again because they mentioned there's no key cards. And the truth of the matter is that there are key cards. In fact, there are sunken key cards. That is the principle at play here. And it's sad to see that they have to lie to you and tell you no key cards, because that's not true at all. So I'm telling you, and that's why you come here and watch these reviews of mine. What are my impressions of this effect? Personally, I think it's okay. I don't think it's bad. I don't like the idea that you have to carry around modified cards to do this effect. That's one thing I don't like. I don't like that you cannot perform this with a borrowed shuffle deck in use. Um, I also don't like that you're working with three piles of cards and you turn your back and the spectator has to, uh, you know, take one pile, shuffle it, look at a card, cut some cards off, bury it in another pile. All of this procedure can lead to screw ups. <laughs> If you perform card magic regularly, then you probably are like me. I don't like turning my back and having uh, my spectators doing a lot of procedure because it lends itself to errors and that never looks good. So I'm going to recommend to you guys a better version of this effect, which looks and feels exactly the same as this one, although you're using a borrowed shuffle deck, you don't have to modify any cards and the procedure is cut shorter than this. So it's a lot easier, but it ends exactly the same way. It ends abruptly very quickly. It looks and feels like this effect, um, but it's just, in my mind, just so much better in those ways, which is why I'm going to recommend it to you guys, which is why you come here and watch the, these reviews of mine. So that's why I would uh, rate this as three out of five. I think it's workable. If you really like Mike Powers version and you like like this version that you're seeing here, you want to learn something like this. Honestly, I would tell you guys, you should just pick up his book Tesseract. And the reason is because the book is $55. That means you're going to be paying about a dollar per trick because there's about 55 tricks in the book. There's lots of good magic in the book. There's card magic, there's coin magic, there's rubber band magic, magic with business cards, there's even mentalism in the book. So you're gonna get lots of effects. Um, if you even take 10% of what you learn in the book and use it in real life, then it was worth what you paid for it. Now I could do a whole review on the book itself, but I will just briefly mention as a side note, if you do pick up the book, my favorite effect in the book is called the fly. Now this is a handling of Larry Jennings' The Visitor card plot. 
Um, you're familiar with that effect, a uh, very popular card effect because it's really, it's an excellent uh, teleportation effect. Um, and uh, what I really liked was the presentation because the presentation centers around uh, the movie The Fly. If you're familiar with the 1986 movie The Fly that had Jeff Goldblum in it, um, it uses the same concept. Uh, you talk about how the man got in the teleporter and the fly went in with him and they teleported across. And you're basically, as you're discussing that, you're having a card signed, it's being isolated uh, between a, a pair of tens and then you put a rubber band around it, you put it on top of one pile, um, you use a joker as the fly and then you openly move the joker from one pile to the other. The other pile has the other pair of tens with a rubber band around it and then when uh, the teleportation has happened, you can show that the sign selection that was isolated between that pair of tens is now gone. And that's going to be shocking because your spectators up to the last moment saw their card between there. Now their sign selection is between the other pair of tens in the other pile. And as a kicker, you can show that the card now has changed because just like in the movie, how the main character shares there they get a, a recombination of dna with the fly the same thing happens because the joker that represents the fly has a different colored back and now their sign selection has a different colored back and that climax just blows people away so personally it's my favorite effect in the book i've gotten really strong reactions from it because the presentation is very strong people that remember the movie have a lot of interest they suddenly perk up and they're like oh i'm not just watching a card trick i remember that movie that was an awesome movie and you're visually showing them um, basically the same scenario with playing cards. And that second climax of the color change just knocks people out. Um, for me, it's my favorite effect in the book. I carry two rubber bands around my deck of cards just for that effect alone. I'm just mentioning it as a side note for those of you that are interested to check that out. You won't be disappointed. It's a lot of fun and the reactions you get are just very strong. I mean, I read the whole book cover to cover and that is the number one effect for me in that book. Um, getting back to the 21 card plot, the effect that I would recommend to you guys to check out um, instead of, of this effect is I would recommend you check out Jack Parker's Sunken 21, which uses the same exact principle, but in a different way. Now here are my reasons why I recommend you check out Jack Parker's version, because one, it can be done with a borrowed shuffle deck in use, you can have the spectator count off 21 cards. They could shuffle the cards themselves. And then you can um, show them that all the cards are different. You have the spectator deal out two piles. So instead of three piles, you're only working with two piles. You turn your back, you tell the spectator, you know, I know you have about half of, the, half of these cards. So why don't you take some cards off of your pile and add them to mine? So there's no way I can know what you're holding. Now, shuffle those cards again in your hand take a look at the top card, they do. Now why don't you take some cards from my pile and add them to yours, so that way I have no idea where the card is, and then take the rest of your card, or my cards, and put them on top of the ones that you're holding onto. So now they've completed it, you turn back around, and very similar to the versions that you will learn in Tesseract or like this, you start dealing the cards face up in three rows, just like as if you were gonna do the 21 card trick, but when you come to the selection that the spectator has selected, you deal that card face down. It looks and feels exactly like the version that's in the book uh, because it's done face up, but you're using a borrowed shuffle deck in use and the spectator only has to work with two piles of cards when you turn your back. So the procedure is a lot simpler for them to understand and very baffling because if you think about it, you don't have any idea how many cards are in their hands and they shuffle them a second time in their hands. And remember, they shuffled all the cards when you began as well. Um, the nice thing is that you can modify your own cards if you wanted to do Jack Parker's version also with all the cards face down, you can also do that as well. Now this is my preferred handling, my favorite version, which is why I'm recommending it to you guys. You can find that in Set to Kill and also Jack Parker's book called 52 Memories. If you don't have 52 Memories, I highly recommend you pick it up because it has a lot of nice original card thinking. Nowadays, people are publishing these card magic books and they're all just variations of known effects and these minor tweaks of 
of uh, known card effects out there. And it's really unfortunate because you don't see a lot of original thinking in card magic anymore. And uh, 52 Memories is one of those card books that I would recommend you pick up because there's a lot of original thinking there. Um, so that's why I recommend you pick it up. If you do get that, you'll actually learn a couple other versions of the 21 card trick also that are published in 52 Memories. And they're not bad at all. Um, one of them is a real magician fooler as well, so it's probably worth picking up. But I just mentioned it to you guys because I think it's a lot better than this version that is trending in the number one spot on Penguin Magic. Uh, the Jack Parker version is so much better overall, which is why I mentioned it to you. I'm just going to mention a couple other recommendations for the 21 card trick if you're interested in that. There was actually a version that was published um, and you can get it on library.com. It's called Scripted Number 4, the 21 card trick. And that was uh, published by Larry Brodahall, I think is his name. I hope I didn't butcher his last name. But the nice thing about it is you can get that for free. So I'm going to leave a link below in the description. You can go to library.com and you can get that right now for free. And what that is, is it's the original 21 card trick. But the script and presentation and pattern is interesting. So it turns a card trick that is very procedure heavy into something that's a lot more interesting. Uh, you're using some coins. Um, you're having the spectator um, do some things. So there's a lot of interaction there. It makes it more interesting, but it is the original 21 card trick with an interesting presentation patter um, and script, which is why I recommend it that you guys just take a look at it and it's for free. So you can go and just pick that up right now if you're interested in that. And then another version of the 21 card trick that I'm just going to briefly mention if you're interested in it. There it was a Penguin Live Lecture that just came out this last month. That was Nathan Caldwell's Penguin Live Lecture. And in there, he went over a couple of versions of the 21 card trick. Um, and in particular, there was one that was called, I think it was called the 21st Nervous Breakdown is what it was called. 21st Nervous Breakdown. And the reason I liked it was because it's with a shuffle deck in use, borrowed deck. And basically this is the 21 card trick that you should perform for somebody who knows the 21 card trick. So just like Nathan goes over in his lecture, if somebody were to show you the 21 card trick, then you take the cards and you proceed to show them this version of the 21 card trick. And the nice thing about it is it seems to violate all the rules of the 21 card trick because you deal out three rows of cards, but you don't deal out 21 cards, you deal more than 21 cards, you deal out 36 cards. Uh, you have the spectator think of a card, you mention to them that in the 21 card trick, you have them put their pile of cards in the middle of the other two piles, and you say, we're gonna violate that. Where do you wanna put it? On the bottom, on the top? Um, and then in the second round of dealing, instead of dealing three rows, now you deal six rows. So you're completely violating the known rules of the 21 card trick, you ask them what row is the, their thought of card in. They tell you, you gather up each row and you let the spectator combine the packets in any order that they want to, which is great. Finally, you deal out uh, the whole packet again into four face down piles. And now you simply pick up two and you just spread them in your hands. And all you say to the spectator is, do you see your card among any of these? And that's it. And they say either yes or no. And with that one question, you will know what their card is. Um, so it's really great. And I love the, the ending that he comes up with, which is great because he says, well, I don't know, um, you know, much about, you know, your card, but I know that if I deal down to the 11th card, that's where your card is going to be. Um, and then he deals down to the 11th card, but the 11th card is not his card, but he says, okay, so your card is, and then they say, oh yeah, it is. And they say, well, you know what? this card didn't even help me because it's not their card. So the nice part about that whole routine is that every step of the way, it violates the known rules of the 21 card trick, yet you still end the trick by knowing their card telling them that. And so it literally elevates the whole thing to another level. So something you may want to take a look at if you're interested in this card plot, or if you just want to learn a version that is impromptu and fun to do, and it's gonna blow away anyone who knows the standard 21 card trick. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to tell you guys for this review. As I mentioned before, you can pick up this download for $10, 
but I would recommend instead if you do like this, just pick up his book, Tesseract. You're gonna get so much more for your money. And if you wanna learn a better version of literally the exact same type of effect, but with a borrowed shuffle deck in use, I recommend Jack Parker's Sunken 21. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them for me below. Um, thanks so much, guys, for tuning into my magic reviews. I hope that this has been helpful to you. I hope I've saved you some money. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'll see you on the next review.